one change that may occur, though slowly, perhaps will be a greater informality in the royal family. With a younger woman on the throne and with her husband, Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, very likely exerting a more democratic influence at Buckingham Palace. Is Philip's status changed? No, Taylor. He probably will soon be given a new title, most likely Prince Consort, but he will continue very definitely to play second fiddle to his wife, even more so now that her title has changed from princess to queen. Their oldest child, three-year-old Prince Charles, will in a few years be given the title Prince of Wales, and he now becomes heir apparent to the throne after his mother, while his baby sister, Princess Anne, follows him in succession. Now, let me be clear on one point, Fred. Is Elizabeth queen now, or does she become queen tomorrow when she returns to London? She became queen the instant King George died this morning. Though she can't formally sign papers or carry out any official duties until she takes the oath. No, Taylor, it's now in the formal stilted language. Elizabeth, by the grace of God of Great Britain, Ireland, and of the British dominions beyond the seas, queen. Thank you very much. That was Frederick B. Opper reporting from London. Deep sympathy has been expressed on this side of the Atlantic by President Truman and Secretary Atchison, whose voice we'll hear in this report by Gunnar Back from Washington. Even those here in Washington who make the cruelest jokes about the British wanting American money were stilled for a moment, as we all were by the news of King George's death. The House of Representatives voted a resolution of deep sorrow and sympathy and adjourned for the day out of respect to the monarch's memory. The Senate passed a resolution of sorrow, too. It was felt King George had stood well for those things that brought his country through the hard years of his 15-year reign, simple goodness, courage, devotion to duty. Members of Congress recalled his visit here 13 years ago. A Senate member then was Harry S. Truman, who today, as President said, he played his part nobly. For the new Queen Elizabeth, whom we all saw last summer, Mr. Truman asked God's blessing. Secretary of State Atchison, who will speak for Mr. Truman in a moment, felt King George had shown simple spirit. It is a characteristic English spirit, and the king possessed it in abundance. The president has expressed for all of us our deepest sympathy to the royal family and to the British people. May God bless the young queen and grant her the strength and wisdom to fulfill her high responsibilities as her father did before her. That was Secretary of State Dean Acheson. Headline edition continues from New York. The news of the King's death has, of course, all but obscured other headlines tonight, but another chapter has been written in another news story in Washington today, a story which on any other day was ready to be taken. That night, tramping beside what was left of his battalion, boys turned into veterans overnight. Young Major Howey was struck down by one of those same Nazi snipers. But his men went on to take San Lo for him, as he had promised he would take it for them. And then came one of the strange, dramatic incidents the war, something that could only happen in the mad hours of a tragic, bitter triumph. With hot, angry tears running unchecked and unashamed in grimy smudges down their hell-singed, battle-blackened faces, Major Howey's victorious battalion set their beloved young leader, shoulders squared in his battle dress, set him in a jeep at the head of his troops and rode him into San Lo dead, staring straight in front of him with unseeing eyes that saw everything. So they kept the promise kept his promise for him, brought Major Howey in heartbreak triumph into the shattered town that he had most surely taken. I think we can look...